tells his disciples, it's not for you to know. But the refreshing, the refreshing we're in right now. This is what, this is why Hebrews 8, 9, and 10 is quoting uh, Jeremiah 30 and 31. Okay, that's the restoration of the kingdom. You'll see that when, when, when Paul or whoever wrote Luke, or sorry, uh, um, Hebrews, when, when, when Paul or whoever wrote Luke, or sorry, uh, um, Hebrews, which I believe it was Luke, but it's possible. It's, it, there's, a, there's a certain way Luke writes that seems familiar in, um, in Hebrews. Way Luke writes that seems familiar in... It, there's, a, there's a certain way Luke writes that seems familiar in, um, in Hebrews. But Alright, so this doesn't matter. It's not a big deal, but uh, we got a problem here. I mean, it's a... To me... To make the suggestion that Luke wrote it based on nothing at all, uh, and I believe this thought was introduced for one purpose only, and that is to confuse people. Now, the whole Bible is comes from God, all right. But if you wanted to say who actually penned, who was the man that penned Hebrews, there really shouldn't be a dispute about this. Um, let's do it this way here, okay? Second Corinthians one verse one. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God and Timothy, our brother. Obviously, Paul wrote that, right? Philemon, Paul, a prisoner of Jesus Christ, and Timothy, our brother. Hebrews thirteen. Know ye that our brother Timothy is set at liberty? By the way this is written, I think it's fair to conclude that Paul wrote it. Uh, to me it's obvious. I mean, it doesn't matter because it comes from God anyway. It could have been Bozo the Clown. It's still from God, right? It doesn't matter who penned it, but um, it just, to me, uh, it doesn't make any sense to to say Luke wrote it, even by the way that's worded, it seems very apparent that it, Paul's the one that penned it, but who cares? For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, but the holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. That's true for the Old Testament, that's true for the New Testament. Um, there's no way around it, but who cares? I mean... It would, it's, you're going to listen to this guy. It's not going to surprise you that he would be wrong about this. Just listen up. Put in his own power. But, but you shall receive power after that the Holy Spirit is come upon you. And you shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and all in Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. Uh, this is about the restoration of the kingdom. Well, did you guys know that the northern kingdom, you know how Yeshua says, that's his name, just so you know, that I, I operate under the truth, so I know what his name is, because no other name will you be saved by. All right, just uh, keep that right there. Keep that in mind, what he's saying. If you're once saved, always saved. Do you know his name? That's in chapter 4. I mean, the Acts Church. This is about Acts, right? The Acts Church, before. I mean, the Acts Church. Shake this it. is about Acts, Shake right? It. The Acts Church was operating under the Holy Spirit. The Acts Church. The this Acts is Church. about Acts, right? The Acts Church was operating. He's holding the Bible right there, showing you. Listen. Under the Holy Spirit. In fact, they grew in the fear of the Lord, which is an idiom, for the Ten Commandments. And they... They grew and, and they followed his rest. What's his rest? <clears throat> the Sabbath. In Mark 1, they stopped working on the Sabbath day. They even had hired servants. They were mending their nets. They were doing things they shouldn't be doing on the Sabbath. And he says, come follow me. And straight away they went into Capernaum and he started preaching with authority. The gospel of repentance. That's in Mark 1. And Peter, filled with the goalie host, said unto them, "Ye rulers." And Peter, filled with the goalie host, said. And Peter, filled with what? Unto them, ye rulers. And 
Peter, filled with the goalie host, said unto them, Ye rulers of the people and elders of Israel, if we this day be examined of the good deed done to the impotent men, by what means he made us whole, be, be it known unto, unto you all, and to all people of Israel, that by the name of the goalie host, sec one. Hold on. The Go. gospel of repentance. That's in Mark 1. And Peter, filled with the goalie host, said unto them, Ye rulers of the people and elders of Israel, if we this day be examined of the good deed done to the impotent men, by what means... He made us whole. Be be it known unto unto you all and to all people of Israel that by the name of I'll say Yeshua. That's what he'll say. That's not what the Bible says. <laughs> I mean, is this unbelievable or what? Be it known unto unto you all and to all people of Israel that by the name of I'll well, I don't know. Say Yeshua. The name it, of what, known unto If you're once saved, always saved, do you know his name? Unto you all and to all people of Israel, that by the name of, I'll say Yeshua, hmm. of Nazareth, whom you crucified. I think he knows right at that moment he's got a problem. Look at the little mouth. I'll say Yeshua. Look at the little mouth turn right there. Of Israel, that he by knows. the name of, I'll say Yeshua. <laughs> I mean, look at this clown right here, right there in the Bible. Now, you either believe the Bible or you don't. All right? So if you don't believe the Bible, you hell, you can just change every word in the Bible, including the name of Jesus Christ. If you're once saved, always saved, and you believe your Bible, the Bible that you hold in your hands, his name is Jesus. All right. Now let's. Up now. Yeah, let's keep listening. Of. I'll say Yeshua. Yeah. So that's strike two. We'll call that strike two. Strike one was the Hebrew thing. That's not a big deal. It's only strike one. Up. Strike two is a big deal. Nazareth. Now you're in trouble. Whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead, even by him doth this man stand here before you whole. This is the stone which was set at naught of the builders, which has become... Now, are you paying attention? Because this is this is going to strike him out right here, bud. Yeshua of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead, even by him doth this man stand here before you whole. This is the stone which was set at naught of the builders, which has become the head of the corner. That's talking about the Ten Commandments. Wow. He just read it verbatim and he missed it. That's a big swing and a miss. Be it known unto you all and to all the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom ye crucified, you rejected him and you crucified him, whom God raised from the dead, even by him does this man stand here before you whole. This is the stone which was set at not of you builders, which has become the head of the corner. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. That name is Jesus, the, I mean, the head of the corner, 
that's Jesus it's all pointed right there it's crystal clear as clear as can be it's Jesus Christ it's not Yeshua and then he goes from Yeshua to the Ten Commandments he's saying that's talking about the Ten Commandments which has become the head of the corner that's talking about the Ten Commandments it's not talking about the Ten Commandments it's talking about that man Ah, uh, where's this at here? Um, that by the name of whom you crucif crucified, even by him, does this man, this man, right here, this man, Jesus Christ, this is the stone which was set. I mean, it's as clear as can be, but all right, so let's. Uh, do a little word search just for this right here head corner all right and we'll notice scroll down here and you'll see here in Psalm 118 verse 22 the stone which the builders refused has become the head stone of the corner there can be no dispute about this the stone that is the headstone of the corner is the Lord Jesus Christ and the builders are them that crucified the Lord all right you can figure it out from there and this is not a one-time standalone verse at all this is repeated over and over consistent all throughout the Bible really Jesus saith unto them did ye never read in the scriptures the stone which the builders rejected the same has become the head of the corner this is the Lord's doing and it is marvelous in our eyes the stone which the, I mean this is all throughout the Bible including Acts 4 should be no doubt about it the stone which the builders rejected is the Lord Jesus Christ. Let's read a little bit here in first Tim or first Peter chapter two to whom coming as unto a living stone disallowed indeed of men but chosen of God and precious ye also as lively stones are built up a spiritual house and holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ wherefore also it is contained in the scripture behold I lay in Zion a chief corner stone elect precious and he that believeth on him shall not be confounded unto you therefore which believe he is precious but unto them which be disobedient the stone which the builders disallowed, the same is made the head of the corner, and a stone of stumbling, and a rock of offense, even to them which stumble at the word, being disobedient, whereunto also they were appointed. But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, a peculiar people that ye should show forth the praises of him who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light which in time past were not a people but are now the people of God which has not obtained mercy but now have obtained mercy all right, and so because you've attained mercy, you're saved, sealed, secured, sanctified forever. Once saved, always saved is the gospel of Jesus Christ. And without it, it is impossible to have peace.